Hello and welcome to the course on econometric modeling. This course is actually designed to introduce you to the concepts of econometrics, econometrics methodology, where econometrics are applicable and how the methods of econometrics are applied in the fields of primarily economics. Uh, see, uh, as we will discuss uh, later that the methods of econometrics are used in many other fields, fields other than economics, but the name itself suggests that econometrics must be having its major applications in the area of economics only. Uh, so, to begin with, we will first uh, introduce the subject uh, econometrics. So, the first module actually deals with what is econometrics, uh, what are its types, where, what are the uh, applications of econometrics and etcetera. So, to begin with I present an overview of uh, the subject. Uh, we have module 1 on an overview. So, first of all, what is econometrics? The literal many meaning of econometrics or, or of the word econometrics is measurement in economics. So, as we know that econ has a relation to econ economics and metrics is associated with measurement. So, measurement in economics is econometrics. Alternatively, it can also be defined as the study of statistical techniques used in economic problems. So, econometrics actually heavily draws from statistical techniques or methodologies and then apply them on economic problems. Econometrics is based upon the development of statistical methods for estimating economic relationships, testing economic theories and evaluating and implementing government and business policies. So, uh, basically uh, this uh, very briefly talks about uh, on what are the aspects or dimensions on which econometrics is based on. First of all, it uh, actually uh, takes basic statistical methodologies, then it makes some further developments in it on the basis of the requirement that is sometimes we will discuss as we will discuss later that sometimes the problems in economics. Uh, is slightly different from what is handled by statisticians, mathematicians or uh, researchers from other scientific domains. So, we probably have very special cases and that is why certain modifications in the methodologies are required and that is why economics, econometrics uh, is further developed from the basic discipline of statistics. Now, what, why, why do we apply them? we apply them in order to understand various economic relationships either suggested by established economic theories or things what we are things that we are interested to estimate understand and further develop and then once we have these uh, you know understanding of various theories and relationships we test for the validity of theories and the expected relationships between different economic variables, we can think of uh, further evaluating them and then their purposes. Their purposes are basically implementation in terms of business strategies and policies. So, uh, policies could be of course, uh, at the private level or at the government level. For example, private firms they may need information on consumer preferences. So, what kind of consumers prefer what kind of products or possibly one may try to understand the purchase behavior of individuals belonging to different social and economic strata or classes. That is the aspect of business entities whereas, when it comes to government entities then uh, they also have certain interest, they first of all are interested in understanding how the economy is doing, where the economy is heading to and how further uh, you know improvements can be done. For example, as uh, we can see that in recent years 
or rather in recent times because of COVID-19 pandemic, all the major economies in the world are, world are heavily affected. So, when uh, these economies are impacted, how are they impacted? What are the sectors that are being worst affected due to this pandemic and what are the way out of this uh, situation? They are basically uh, topics of interest for uh, the government policy makers. So, they are also they would need help of econometrics in understanding uh, in, or in analyzing data collected over a period of time and then that may give us further direction regarding how this situation can be improved, what are the measures that need to be taken. So, uh, econometrics is that is how based on the development of statistical methods which are actually also important or useful for evaluating and implementing government and business policies as well. The most common application of econometrics is the forecasting of important macroeconomic variables such as interest rates, inflation rates and gross domestic product. To name a few, we can uh, have a very long list of uh, variables that can be uh, predicted using macroeconomic data. So, uh, as I was talking about uh, the impact of COVID-19 pandemic, then uh, very recently uh, or probably throughout the 2020s when the pandemic impacted many countries in the world, we could uh, see or we have seen that IMF has on a regular basis come up with uh, projected growths for various countries. So, uh, it has also predicted or projected growth rates for India. And similarly, there are Indian agencies also including government sector, they also come up with projections for future growth rates that is GDP growth rates. So, these predictions are certainly based on methodologies which are part of econometrics. So, and that is the most common application we can actually think of or we do think of as econometrics is the uh, most important or econometrics probably provides us with the uh, very basic tools of forecasting important macroeconomic variables. But while forecasts of economic indicators are highly visible and often widely published, econometric methods can be used in economic areas that have nothing to do with macroeconomic forecasting. So, uh, uh, for example, that's that that's the example probably I was trying to go do give that we always do not need to forecast thing or probably uh, there could be forecasts beside macroeconomic forecasting. For example, I am going to launch a new product. Uh, that product could be anything starting from say a uh, uh, detergent powder. So, I want to launch it at the local level first of all. Then uh, what happens is that I want to, I need to understand what are the consumption pattern of a detergent powder among the consumers in that locality. So, for that I would need to collect data and on that basis what I can find out is that what is the future projected growth rate of this particular sector. Now, of course, uh, you know uh, the in order to launch a product like detergent powder probably no one does uh, any kind of analysis. This is more important when uh, we launch a product nationwide or uh, when we completely we are planning to launch a completely new product. In that case having uh, an understanding about consumer preferences is very helpful. So, that is that could be done using consumer uh, survey data when the product is completely new, consumers are not at all even aware of it, nobody has used it. So, we can ask them that if such a product is made available to you, whether you are going to use it or not, whether you would like to use it or not, what kind of prices you would uh, like to pay for that kind of a product etc. So, these are the questions one can generate from a consumer survey and we can do some basic analysis using econometric tools to understand what would be the possible demand for such a product. Now, uh, the thing is that uh, if a product which already exists in the market, then what its 
you know uh, current growth rate. So, every year the consumption of any product mostly increases because population is increasing, people's income is increasing, lifestyles are changing. So, consumption pattern also changes. So, based on such projected growths of consumption patterns, one can understand that if a new product or a competitive uh, you know product is launched in the market, then what market share it can capture, what are the prices that should be charged on that particular product and things like that. So, business forecasting is also there, but then there are purposes which are beyond simple forecastings. For example, we want to understand that uh, uh, why, what, what is the status of female employment in the Indian economy. So, female employment level is much less compared to male employment level. What are the reasons behind that? Is it, is it some, has it something to do with uh, education level? Has it something to do with uh, marital status, location, etc. So, there could be many factors, family income, you know uh, the job prospects a particular uh, you know the, the the development of the job market etc they are actually very important factors in determining whether a female gets employed or not also other factors include uh, you know the social security security system in a particular city in the cities or places where women do not feel insecure they may feel like going out for work more compared to places or cities where possibly security is not that much. So, given all these things, they are also examples where econometrics uh, methods can be applied. The main techniques employed for studying economic problems are of equal importance in financial applications. So, finance is also another area which though not exclusively use econometric methods, but it also uses econometric methods heavily. So, uh, finance and economics are the major areas where econometrics is used, but it, it is used in a wide variety of other fields as well including political methodology, sociology, health economics, medical research, environmental economics, economic geography, transportation, engineering and numerous other fields. Practitioners in these fields and many more are all heavy users of techniques of econometrics. Econometrics has evolved as a separate discipline from mathematical statistics because of the need economists faced in handling non-experimental data. So, since they as I have told in the beginning that these are simply you know statistical methods or rather we have borrowed from mathematical statistics. Uh, to uh, apply them on economic problems. So, basically what are these peculiarities because of which we needed to borrow and modify according to our requirement. So, uh, first of all um, we need to define between experimental and non-experimental data. Experimental data are basically data which are collected uh, through experiments and experiments are often conducted in controlled laboratory environments and most commonly they are used and observed in natural sciences. So, as we all know that physics, chemistry, all these natural sciences, they conduct experiments, generate data and then in order to, they apply statistical methods on those data in order to analyze them. But in economics, we tend to have non-experimental data which are also called observational data. They are not accumulated or collected through controlled experiments on individuals, firms or other segments of the economy. Now, there is, there is something extremely important or interesting about this non-experimental data or observational data because they are naturally occurring data. For example, if I consider macroeconomic data, then we can say that starting from say 1947, we have recorded data of gross domestic product for India. Now, for each and every year, we have one gross domestic product data and this basically cannot be changed, modified, altered or repeated. 
So, it is not possible that I did not like the 1991 GDP figures. So, I can have another GDP figures for 1991 for India. So, once that has happened that is being observed that has happened and there, there is no way we can change it. So, these are naturally occurring data and we call them non-experimental data. Similarly, we can also think of other kinds of data say if I try to understand what are the factors that impact income of an individual. So, income of an individual may depend on of course, his level of education, his years of experience, maybe his uh, area of specialization. It may also depend on the gender whether it is a female or male. It can depend on the location that person is residing. So, given all these things, maybe I want to understand that what are the factors that impact the in income of an individual. So, I collect data from 100 individuals, but there is also one thing, these are also non-experimental data because when I pick the first individual, he or she has certain amount of income, certain amount of experience, education and so on which cannot be altered. I can increase my sample size from 100 to 200 to 500 to 1000, but then these are not experiments because I cannot change an individual's income and other you know uh, individual specific data. So, these data are observational data, they do not actually change and th that is why possibly economists need to have a modified or uh, specially developed techniques compared to what the mainstream statisticians or mathematical statisticians develop and use. So, for example, GDP, IIP, inflation, interest rate, stock prices all are naturally occurring economic data and these are macroeconomic data when we talk about uh, individuals income and then associated characteristics then they are possibly uh, micro data right data collected from uh, at the micro level from individuals. So, the method of multiple regression analysis is the mainstay in both the fields of mathematical statistics and econometrics both of us uh, heavily rely or both of these subject areas heavily rely on ma multiple regression analysis, but the focus and interpretation can differ markedly. That is the way we look at a particular problem and try to address it, it could be very much different from the way it is uh, you know handled by a mathematical mathematician or a statistician. In addition, economists have devised new techniques to deal with the complexities of economic data and to test the predictions of economic theories. Now, what are those data and uh, what are uh, those uh, specifications that we will definitely learn along the course, but for the time being uh, we just need to mention that there are basically basic differences because of which uh, we need tend to have or we need to have a separate uh, subject area that is econometrics other than what the statisticians have been doing. Now, we can differentiate econometrics into uh, or categorize econometrics into two sub fields though the differences uh, actually are not very sharp, neither they are actually uh, you know useful while applying these methodologies, but still these are important for understanding. So, we can have micro versus macro econometrics. The former is characterized by its analysis of cross section and panel data and by its focus on individual consumers, firms and micro level decision makers. Practitioners rely heavily on the theoretical tools of microeconomics including utility maximization, profit maximization and market equilibrium. So, while dealing with microeconometrics. So, here I have used certain terminologies like cross section and panel data. Uh, you might not be familiar uh, as of now with this kind of data types, 
But then uh, we will be soon learning in uh, future modules what are these types of data. But what is more important is that it basically focuses on individual consumers. So, if you are coming from, uh, if you have studied econometrics, you know that we have two broad fields of uh, study, one is microeconomics, another is macroeconomics. So, microeconomics deals with micro level entities, micro means small. So, smaller entities like we individuals and then individual firms and individual firms coming together forming individual types of markets, they are basically part of uh, microeconomics and macroeconomics actually uh, is the field where we go for aggregation. So, aggregation here implies when all the individuals of an economy are considered together, we have macroeconomic uh, data. Similarly, all the firms taken together, their production gives us index of industrial production. All the agricultural products produced by the farmers of a nation it gives us agricultural uh, production of the country. Similarly, we have nationwide wholesale price index that is a uh, price index uh, that is a general price index. Similarly, we can have consumer price index. So, all these basically are measured at the aggregate level or the national level and that is why they are called macroeconomics or macroeconomic data. Macro here large, so when we are going for aggregation then we end up at macroeconomics. So, Microeconomics since it deals with micro level or small entities, so uh, it includes individual consumers, firms and micro level decision makers, right. And uh, that is how uh, practitioners rely heavily on theoretical tools of microeconomics. And what are these theoretical uh, tools? Uh, if you again have studied microeconomics, you know utility maximization problem, profit maximization problems market equilibrium and so on. So, where we, where we deal with supply and demand, we try to measure demand elasticities of, a in, of an individual product, they are basically part of microeconomics and when we try to estimate elasticity, demand elasticity, supply elasticities of individual commodities for a particular market, then they are part of microeconometrics. Macroeconometrics is involved in the analysis of time series data, usually of broad aggregates such as price levels, the money supply, exchange rates, output, investment, economic growth and so on. So, uh, as I have already defined macroeconomics, these are basically concepts which are studied and covered under macroeconomics. And uh, consequently, uh, you can uh, say that when we use econometrics in order to analyze these kind of data, then they are called macroeconomic data. So, things which are measured and studied at the aggregate level and the methods applied to understand those data is macroeconometrics. Now, we come to examples of applications of microeconometrics. Now, here I actually have uh, quoted some of the studies. These are basically uh, very well known or uh, popular studies and that is why they have been referred to. So, interested students can also uh, you know get back to the original studies and understand what are the problems that have been uh, handled there and what are the methodologies that are being used there. For example, one study by Ashton Felter and Heckman in 1974 which uh, try to understand what are the likely effects on labor supply behavior of proposed negative income taxes. So, when income taxes are imposed, then uh, how the labor supply or the laborers are going to react by changing labor supply or availability of labor in the labor market. So, a uh, similar study uh, is or maybe uh, not similar rather uh, other microeconometric studies are for example, Hanushek in 1999, Hawksby 2000, Angrist and Levy in 1999, where they try to understand do smaller class sizes bring real benefits in student performance. So, here one is trying to find out the impact of class size on students performance. Is it really 
the fact that if the class size is small, then students performance improve. Then another example is uh, from Rifahan et al 2003, where he examines does the presence of health insurance induce individuals to make heavier use of healthcare system? Is moral hazard a measurable problem? So, now the thing is that uh, one is probably uh, checking the problem re associated with health insurance, health insurance. How, uh, you know, the, uh, how individual, uh, individuals can try to exploit health insurance policies provided by insurers. So, whether there are moral hazards or not. Moral hazard here actually refers to a situation where uh, possibly uh, two parties involved in a transaction do not provide uh, equal amount of information or sufficient amount of information, positive information to each other. So, both the parties involved in the transaction do not have equal information. One has more information, the other one has less information. So, the one who has more information is always at an advantageous position and can manipulate the deal or the trade. So, when the trade or the deal is manipulated, then the person who is having less information may be at a disadvantageous position. If that disadvantageous position leads to some further economic costs associated with possible problems coming up, then that is what is called moral hazard. Anyway, uh, that is uh, these concepts are actually beyond the scope of uh, this uh, uh, course, but uh, very briefly what it implies is that suppose I am taking insurance from a company, but I am not providing complete details of my health status of uh, other information, maybe I am hiding some and I am uh, being dishonest in providing certain information, then the insurer does not have actually complete knowledge of my health condition. This may lead to basically exploitation of the health insurer that I may make future claims very frequently or I, I claim probably uh, every year I may claim. So, which I actually did not disclose to the insurer. This, these are the kind of problems. Now, examples of applications of macroeconometrics include does a monetary policy regime that is strongly oriented toward controlling inflation impose a real cost in terms of lost output on the US economy? This problem was addressed by Sashati and Rick in 2001. So, it basically uh, deals with monetary policy regime and uh, what kind of impact it has on output when the regime actually tries to control inflation. So, people uh, from uh, economics background knows that when you uh, go for a very tight monetary policy regime that impacts the growth negatively, that impacts the inflationary situation positively. So, inflation comes down, but growth falls. So, what kind of trade offs are there? Are these trade offs uh, actually uh, considerable and things like that? Is the relation between inflation and unemployment as depicted through Phillips curve stable over a long period of time? So, Phillips curve is actually uh, again another uh, a very well celebrated concept in economics which um, gives an inverse relationship or a negative relationship between wages and inflation in an economy. So, uh, it has been observed that Phillips curve in the context of some countries that Phillips curves are actually not stable. So, Phillips curve keep on moving upward or downward. And uh, this kind of stability, whether it is applicable in all possible other countries or not, what kind of behavior we can expect in terms of uh, movements in Phillips curve, they can also be studied and they would form part of macroeconometrics concepts. But as I was trying to tell you in the beginning, that the boundaries are actually not very sharp or not at all sharp. For example, the very large field of financial econometrics is concerned with long time series data and occasionally vast panel data sets, but with a sharply focused orientation towards models of individual behavior. The analysis of market returns and exchange behavior is neither exclusively macro nor microeconometrics. 
The reason is that it has components of macro level analysis, it has components of micro level analysis. When we are uh, considering market returns and exchange rate behavior, then uh, at the aggregate level they are certainly macro econometrics, but then when we uh, consider you know, individual stock prices and their impact on uh, you know the market returns, individual stock prices and their impact on we can also uh, you know establish if, if, we, if we concern ourselves with individual uh, stock prices and uh, returns associated with them then they are specifically micro problems. But then individual stock prices and market returns they are basically a mix of micro and macro uh, approaches. So, that is how one can uh, you know think of a mixed approach. Other than that these days we also have the trend of working with micro na level data at the aggregate level. So, I consider all the individuals of an economy, but then I am working with micro data. So, all the individuals income, employment, gender, uh, location, marital status, religion, etcetera, these are demographic factors, there could be other economic factors and other uh, you know uh, socio economic cultural factors all are listed down. I can pick up a particular uh, segment and work on them. So, that is again a mixed approach where I am working at the aggregate level, but working with the micro level data right. So, that is how uh, the approach to uh, of my, uh, econometrics is actually not very sharp, uh, they uh, many a times blur or probably you know um, mix with each other. Then we talk about uh, theoretical versus applied econometrics. So, this is another useful distinction between theoretical econometrics and applied econometrics. Theorists develop new techniques for estimation and hypothesis testing and analyze the consequences of applying particular methods when the assumption that justify those methods are not met. Applied econometricians are the users of these techniques and the analysis of and the analysis of data uh, real world and simulated ok. So, uh, basically uh, theoretical econometrics they focus on development of econometric methods that is setting aside uh, any economic problems they are rather into 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 model building itself and the data generated could be experimental data. So, data generated is uh, basically through simulation and using that simulated data they try to establish the theory that they are you know actually propagating. So, that is a uh, theoretical econometrics. While empirical econometrics is application of those methods that are being developed by the theoreticians on real time economic problems right. So, that is how we have the differences between theoretical and applied econometrics. However, again the distinction is far from sharp because there are many instances where in a real time problem the existing methods do not appear sufficient then further methodologies are developed and then applied on the real time data. So, while dealing with real time data one may feel the need to further modify or develop the existing uh, uh, methodologies. So, here we have a combination of theoretical and applied econometrics. Now, we uh, talk about empirical economic analysis. So, basically the field where econometrics is used or specifically the field of applied econometrics. An empirical analysis uses data to test a theory or to estimate a relationship that has some importance for business decisions or policy analysis. So, this is actually an application of empirical econometrics. We are using the methodology to test a theory or estimate a relationship. In some cases, especially those that involve the testing of economic theories, a formal economic model is constructed. An economic model consists of mathematical equations that describe various relationships, right. Now, uh, I will explain this with an example. 
So, uh, we will take the example of a demand equation. The quantity demanded of each commodity, we know that it depends on the price of goods, the price of substitutes and complementary goods, the consumer's income and individual's characteristics that affect the taste and preferences of individuals. These equations can form the basis of an econometric analysis of consumer demand. So, uh, suppose in the previous case we can basically write the econometric model as we are measuring demand for a particular product. So, suppose we denote the demand by Q, then it becomes a function of the price of that product, the uh, prices of its substitute commodities, the prices of its complementary goods the consumer's income, so consumer's income and other individual characteristics that affect the taste and preferences. So, we denote it by taste and preferences. So, this is a generalized functional form which can be further expanded as a linear or nonlinear for, form. So, for simplicity if I expand it in a nonlinear form, I can write it as demand for a particular product depends on the price of its own, the price of its substitute commodity, the price of its complementary good, then income of the consumer and finally, I have the taste and preferences. So, once I have a specific form, then what happens is that this is a measurable concept and given the demand for the product and given information on these variables, I can always try to find out what are these parameter estimates which will tell us which one of this is more important and which actually is impacting, which is not impacting and so on and so forth. So, this is an example of an economic model which is estimable or can be rendered estimable using econometric methods. Uh, we can take another example, suppose a labor economist would like to examine the effects of job training on workers productivity. Since productivity is difficult to measure, it can be represented by wages earned. So, a more productive individual or laborer would be actually given a higher wage, right. So, further productivity or wages also depend on education and on the job experience of the workers. Therefore, the model can be conceptualized as something like this, where wage is a function of education experience and on the job training, right. So, uh, this is how I have a generalized functional form. Now, again this generalized functional form can be converted into a linear functional form where I write that it depends on uh, first of all education, then it depends on experiment and then it depends on the training of the individual. Right. Once I have a linearized form, then this is again an estimable concept. So, how do we estimate these con you know ideas or relationships that uh, we are probably going to learn here, but for the timing, so these are the economic models where we can apply econometrics. On the basis of economic model developed or conceptualized, econometric models are formulated to estimate the economic model with real time or simulated data. Uh, the next module presents the steps involved in formulating econometric models. So, in this model we what uh, in this module what we have learnt is what is primarily econometrics, what are the types and what are the applications and then we move on to the next module where we talk about formulation of econometric models. These are the references, thank you.